Have you ever looked into RV skirting options, saw the price, and thought, dang, why is this so expensive? In this video, we're going to reveal an RV skirting solution that will help save you thousands in winter, which can be done in less than one day. And we're going to discuss how well it holds up in intense winter conditions. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome to Happily Ever Hanks. For the best RV tips, secrets, inspiration, you've come to the right place. So at what point or temperature should you be skirting your RV? You know, like how low can you go? Now we've been through many winters and unfortunately we've been exposed to way more freezing temperatures than we prefer. We've determined that our cutoff temperature for our RV lies around the single digits. We got a crazy story for you actually. When we first were exposed to these insane temperatures, we started off full-timing in Pennsylvania for an entire winter, but we had no idea what was coming. This is a lot of snow. I've been trying to stay on top of sweeping off the roof of the camper. It's heavy snow, so if you don't stay on top of it, I don't know. I don't want to put the roof at jeopardy for more than its weight limitation, so. But at least we have the cookies. We got cookies. We were not prepared for a blizzard incoming a couple days later. We showed up, temperatures dropped immediately, wind chills, frozen pipes, you name it, we went through the whole conundrum. We knew we had to RV skirt that winter, but the blizzard just came immediately and gave us no chance to prepare. So to the internet, we went to do some research and that's where we were blown away by how expensive all the skirting options were. We're talking thousands of dollars for just the supplies. And then if you wanna have a professional come do it, add on a couple more thousand dollars. There's so many options out there and I'm assuming that's why you clicked on this video because you, just like us, didn't know where to start. Once we determined that we didn't want to spend thousands of dollars, we had to look into doing it ourselves. We didn't know how much this was going to cost, but we went for it. So off to Lowe's we went. Some of the supplies needed we already had on hand, so we were good to go there. Our friends on the property we were staying at had concrete blocks and bricks, so we were able to borrow those. But we also had measuring tape, we had the box cutter. We just needed a couple supplies at Lowe's, and luckily, they're easy supplies to come by when you're out and about at your local hardware store. Now, the actual measurements that we got for the foam insulation boards were four by eights, and they were one inch in thickness. We got about nine of those, and just know that every RV is different size, but not only in length, but height too. We have a pretty tall fifth wheel and the distance from the ground up to the base of the RV is pretty tall. When you think about skirting, you wanna make sure the entire underneath of your RV is completely blocked off from the outer elements. So when you gotta take that measurement of height into account, well, you gotta figure out what insulation board is gonna work best for you. We secured the boards by using a thing called foil tape super easy to use i love it because it's very flexible and you can place it as you want on your rv but there were some concerns and drawbacks that we noticed as we went along and we'll get into that in just a few minutes we're gonna go over how easy this entire process was starting right now and then we're gonna break down if it actually worked and held up in the end this first step is very crucial because if you forget it, you're gonna have to start over. You're gonna wanna take those concrete blocks or bricks and put them on the inside before you lay the foam boards down. If you don't do this and you get huge wind gusts into the RV, it's just gonna flop those foam boards and push them towards the RV more. What we ended up doing was we measured each section of the RV to cut foam boarding accordingly, making sure not to block any vents or compartments along the way. Now, when you do make these cuts through the foam board, it's super easy, but just make sure that you do it in a space you don't mind getting messy because as you make these cuts, all this foam board is going to break up into small little pieces and go everywhere. Trust us, it's a lot of mess to clean up and you're not going to want to be chasing your tail during this process. It was a lot of measuring and cutting, measuring and cutting, because around the RV, it is different heights and different lengths to deal with. Especially depending on what terrain you're parked on, you could be higher in the back, lower in the front. It's just, you gotta cut and makeshift these pieces accordingly and it could just take some time. I think the most tedious process when it was time to actually attach the boards to the RV with this foil duct tape. Now, before we did any attaching to the RV, we did wipe the RV clean and she was dirty. It kind of helped prep the area. That way it made a good solid 
connection and held sturdy throughout the entire winter we were there. Around and around we went, measuring, cutting, sticking, and just kept going until we covered up every hole. But you might be thinking, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. There are certain holes you should have exposed. What about your sewer hose and your water connections? What we did for that was super easy. We actually just ended up cutting like a one by one foot piece out to make our adjustments or drain the sewer line as needed. We used some more foil tape to tape it back up, just kind of pop it on and off as needed. Yeah, you created like a cute little door, a little entryway to let in a rip. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because we only dumped our tanks when they were full so that everything stayed nice and warm in those holding tanks. And another thing you want to consider as you are skirting your RV is when you run into situations of slide outs and fenders. We personally removed our fenders to just make it a more flush surface that we can mount the insulation foam board skirting onto. Yeah, don't forget about those slide outs. It's part of your living space. And if you don't insulate under your slide outs, it's gonna be chilly. One thing that I noticed was a little touch and go along the insulation process was making sure we laid those concrete blocks far enough away from one another, but not too far so that it maintains stability throughout. Because boy, there were times where the spacing was just a little too much. And you kind of did one of those like lean up against the RV and it kind of pushed in. So just make sure everything's nice and reinforced before moving on. At the end, we did a little walk around and where we saw holes and gaps, we just filled that in with extra foil tape, mm -hmm. you know, just because. Something I wish we would have done was put some of our items we weren't going to use in the winter underneath, like where the skirting was, our chairs, our table. But for warning, I'm thinking about that now. You might have ran into an issue where you needed to access some of those items. So you got to make accommodations where you can pull it on and off as needed. Because if not, everything's going to be taped up nice and super solid. And then you're not going to want to disrupt that. I guess you're right. You did want your chair so that you could sit out in the snow and eat breakfast. I wasn't even thinking. Hey, can you uh, grab me the phone? Moving right along. Now the cost of all this, it may surprise you. And it's gonna vary depending on the size of RV you have and how thick you want that insulation board to be. It's personal preference. And with the cost we're about to give you, was it worth it? Meaning, how well did it hold up? Our cost for all these supplies and to do the installation was around $250. Compared to a thousand or two. But like we said, is it worth it? Is it gonna hold up compared to the thousand, two thousand dollar skirting you can get online? Now a winter in Pennsylvania is not for the faint of heart. It would be a long stretch to get above freezing temperatures during any of the days at peak times. I would say the highs were a balmy 31 degrees. A little chilly at best. Woo! 31 degrees Fahrenheit? That's a heat wave. We had the skirting on from the end of December all the way to about beginning of March. And there were a decent amount of snowstorms during that time. Our layout for the situation, we were blocked on one side of our RV by a huge shop. But it left us exposed on the other side of the RV to a hillside that was exposed to wind gusts and just freezing cold nastiness. Talk about stripping all that heat from underneath your RV. Robbed us blind. Winter of early 2021 was just rough for the Hanks. FYI, we did not add any additional heat sources under the insulation like heat lamps or portable heaters. But for clarity's sake, we did put that heat gun underneath when our pipes froze. To thaw it out. Yeah. Yeah. Just for a second. To reemphasize, we were caught off guard when first getting to Pennsylvania. When those temperatures dropped into the teens and below with the wind chills coupled with it, it dropped to like negative three degrees. Our pipes froze and we had to like backpedal quickly. Fast forward now that we have that skirting, how well did it hold up? After an entire winter being exposed to these harsh elements, we had no frozen pipes, the insulation never buckled or came apart whatsoever, and we were nice and toasty. Not to say we saved thousands of dollars doing this DIY skirting. Holy cow, not just in the install, but in propane costs as well. Here's the thing, all this information is irrelevant because so many RVers out there who winter RV make mistakes that render all this useless. Why you can't use electricity to heat your RV 
or the process of dumping your RV when it's basically 10 degrees outside. Watch this video right here because it answers all your RV winter questions and more. Think of it as your complete guide to success. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye guys. Bye.